Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we are talking about this nightmare. A true nightmare of every pianist. Uh, etude in G sharp minor, opus 25, number 6, so called a double thirds etude. But the first question. Is it that spectacular, especially for music lovers, for not musicians and not pianists? Is it that spectacular uh, uh, comparing to, for example, Opus 10 number one? <laughs> Opus 10, number 4. Opus 10, number 8. Or even uh, Opus 25, number 12. Uh, well, I don't think so. For audience, these etudes are... Oh my God, how difficult are they? I mean, of course they are very difficult. But comparing to G sharp minor, comparing to double thirds, all pianists agree with me, I think. They are nothing. <laughs> we cannot compare the amount of time that the pianist has to... Um, give and spend practicing this double thirds etude. But this is Chopin, so of course this is a poetry, you know? So difficult, so hard, but these difficulties are hidden because they are only uh, sources uh, with which Chopin is constructing a beautiful piece of art. But okay, double thirds, what are they? Especially for not musicians. Uh, you know, the third is the interval. Just three notes. I mean, one, the first note and the third note. And this is called the third. We can have the major third or the minor third. And, well, what is the problem? When I play the third like this, we don't really have a problem to play one third like this. I'm using this finger and this finger, or this finger and this finger, or this finger and this finger. This and this are the most difficult and not comfortable to play the third with. Um, and, well, the only problem that a young pianist have by playing one third is to play it uh, exactly even, like sim simultaneously, not like this, which happens very often when we have one black and one white key, because black keys are a little bit closer to us, so it happens that the black key is earlier than the white. So we have to really uh, consciously uh, think about it, that the black key is a little bit higher than the white. It's actually obvious, but very often we forget about it, because it's too obvious to think about. So this is not really a problem, but the problem starts when we have to play the sequence of uh, thirds, so as a scale of thirds, and in this etude, right hand is playing exclusively using thirds, all the time. So, now I show you what exactly how I mean, how it looks like so that you can see what it actually is difficult double thirds looks like this so when we have the scale and you can see that very often there is one black key one white then two white then two black two white white black Black, white, white, black, black, white. All the time the position of the fingers are different. If we want to play it very fast, 
then it is a really um, uncomfortable problem. And you know, usually at schools we practice, of course. Well, I didn't because I was a little lazy and I, I found it very boring. Uh, I, I must admit, uh, but we normal students normally practice um, just scales with thirds, right? So. this for one hour you know every day of course it improves double thirds and everybody every pianist should do it uh, because it saves the time to learn uh, for example this piece of music um, when we have this technique it's a little easier but it's still extremely difficult to play and I I can tell you because probably you are um, wondering how long did it take me to learn it and play it relatively well, as well, as well as I can. Uh, as far as I remember, it took me about six months, five to six months. So almost half a year of everyday practicing. Well, almost everyday practicing, because, you know, the practicing this attitude is like you, you start uh, very slowly, you practice a little, you practice, you get a little faster, a little faster, a little faster, then you have a breakdown, so then you stop. Uh, after one week you get back, you practice again, then you have another breakdown, so then you destroy the score, or you throw away the score uh, out of the window, uh, or you burn the score, depending on how much hatred is inside your heart towards this attitude. Uh, but then you print out the new score and then you start again and it takes six months of this battle uh, <laughs> and for me at least and after six months well I was you know imagine this day when you wake up and you again oh my god again I have to start again and then suddenly it works this was the best day of my life of course I'm exaggerating a little bit but it was one of the greatest satisfaction that I felt in my hand. And you know why? Because for this attitude we need time. The hand needs time to absorb to all these difficulties, to play these thirds. The earlier we start, the better for us, because when we are very young, we absorb everything much faster. Um, and absolutely, this attitude improves the technique very much. But there is something much more than only the technical difficulty in this attitude. There is a pure poetry. And many musicologists uh, call it this attitude um, the one and only uh, attitude like this uh, in thousands of attitudes uh, written for this problem. You know, I uh, took this effort and I looked for um, attitudes which were composed for this problem, double thirds, by uh, various composers before Chopin. And uh, it would be a shame for those composers is if now I would present this for you. Well, I play for you a little one exercise written by one composer, which I will not tell you the name because I don't want uh, to, you know, make you think down of him. It, Everybody comparing to Chopin just lose. But just for you to hear what kind of boring exercises, automatic, uh, like, you know, like a computer kind of playing, were usually these exercises. Sorry, once again. Thank you. 
uh, that's how it sounds of course it should sound better but i didn't practice it um i was just i didn't want to i didn't have time i'm sorry i'm doing all the 24 etudes now so i simply uh, lack of time but just to give you the impression forgive me my playing but that was not really too much music in it i think you agree and um so this is the main difficulty these double thirds which are going very fast you know if i were to show you uh one thing that the part of the right hand played with two hands is already extremely difficult and now i will show you only the right hand part played with two hands so the left hand will play the uh, the voice at the bottom right hand at the top <laughs> This is already hard, you know. And when we play it with one hand, the upper voice is played by these three fingers. The bottom voice is playing only by those two fingers. So how we practice it? Well, we usually, I when I practice it, I started uh, from practicing each voice separately. So first I practice and using the fingers that I'm going to use later. So first I practice the upper voice. slower at first then going faster and so on uh, and then the lower voice well only those two fingers you know well, and the whole etude like this and only then when I could play it in a relatively fast tempo it took me a few weeks I think then I put them together and then I started to have right hand uh, progressing right so i put them together and we have many i will i practiced in many different exercises and uh, i promised you to prepare another video tutorial video about how i practiced how i think mm, we should practice this attitude mm, so just be patient if you are a pianist you are interested in that I will do it uh, this year for sure um, but in this video we mostly focus on analysis but of course we have to start slowly then we have to gradually uh, play faster and faster we can also take a group of five notes and try to play these five notes very fast and repeat it many times right and then another five and then maybe nine and then the whole attitude like this and you know that's now you see why it takes so much time but that's not uh, the only difficulty that we have in this study we have much more this is only right hand and now my friends surprise right hand has only the accompaniment Maybe you've heard it when I played it for you. Maybe you know it yourself, but right hand has only the accompaniment. It's, uh, these are my words, it's the most beautiful and the most difficult accompaniment ever written for piano. <laughs> Extremely beautiful, poetic, mm, delicate, uh, but like a, like a wind, you know, like, <sighs> but only accompaniment. The main, mm, part of the etude and the hero of the etude is the left hand because left hand has a story to tell left hand has a message that's really unique that's why also this etude is so unique because all the other composers made right hand with the thirds or sometimes left also had the thirds in some etudes but right hand was the main problem so this was the music and left hand was only accompanying umpa umpa usually like that um not here so another difficulty in the left hand is um that as i said left hand has the music but also left hand has 
um, a very difficult part, a sequence of chords uh, that consists on two, on three, sorry, chords that consists of three notes and they must be played legato. It happens already at the beginning. And it's also not very easy and sometimes pianists play which is simply horrible. This takes a lot of time to make it a beautiful singing legato. Um, and another difficulty, which is a little hidden, but now I will show it for you, is that the dynamic. The dynamic, so louder and more silent, louder and more silent, is different in each hand. It's different. So when the right hand is doing crescendo, the left hand very often must do the diminuendo and they have to do it. Already at the beginning we have this problem. When we go up with the right hand and Chopin writes crescendo, but left hand has sequence going down, so must do the diminuendo. And it sounds like this. It's extremely hard to do because of course this is the you know the highest level of playing when you finally achieved the flu fluent playing of the thirds uh, the balance left hand singing and uh, everything works then you start to play it light which is also hard and then you also try to do different dynamic in different hands and then you have the world-class playing of this etude. It's not enough to overcome all the technical difficulties of this etude. And this is the, another reason why it is so hard and why it takes so much time. Because now I want to present for you two versions of this etude. First, I will present for you the version when the pianist overcomes uh, the general technical difficulties of playing thirds and he is playing this like an exercise for the thirds. And when a pianist is playing this like an exercise for the thirds, that it sounds like this. I did it. Heavy, uh, no poetry, no Chopin, no music, just technically, technically relatively well. Well, I can do it better, but for this video I hope it's, it's acceptable. So, of course we can play faster, you know, but that's not really how it should sound, because it lacked poetry. And now I will play for you the higher level of playing when the same pianist, so me in this uh, spent another month to make this sound beautiful. So right hand lighter, like uh, ghosts, you know, and left hand talking, presenting some uh, message. <laughs>
played the whole thing. Oh, so, I'm sorry. But I kind of enjoy playing this, uh, this etude, I must say. Um, it is just so beautiful. Anyway, so I think we are done with talking about difficulties. Uh, I hope this is clear. I just wait for my tutorial video. And now we proceed to analysis of uh, the emotional part of this attitude and of the structure. So architecture and especially the structure, my friends, in this attitude is beautiful, is unique. That's the better word. This is unique because it never happened in the etudes and is something new and something that uh, makes this etude stand up, I mean, mm, to be different, that's what I mean, from all the others. So, let's start. The beginning of the etude is horrible, it's a nightmare for every pianist, of course the whole etude is, but especially the beginning. Just imagine the pianist playing it in public. The pianist has to start with the right hand only playing double thirds, a trill. No. The trill is already hard to play evenly with only one voice. Here we have two voices. Imagine the pianist a little nervous, maybe cold hands, maybe wet hands, sitting and has to start this etude. Well, I know this feeling. I don't wish my enemy this, this feeling, you know? It is not a pleasant feeling. But anyway, Chopin is very wicked because we don't have the left hand to support the right hand. We, right hand just starts the introduction, but this is only the accompaniment. This is like in nocturnes, some of the nocturnes, we have the accompaniment first to create the atmosphere and then the, th the theme is coming. Right? Here we have the same, but the accompaniment is double third, so it's a pro technical problem. And this is the introduction and presenting the accompaniment for the main story, which happens in the left hand. Now let's listen to part A, left hand only and tell me how many persons we have in this story. And this was part A. Um, in my in my head and in my analysis this will be part A and why it's so short you will know and understand at the end of this video so stay with me two persons the bass well a little dark a little you know scary maybe and then the upper voice which is Go, scale has a scale going down. Beautiful legato. And then the second time. And second. This is very characteristic. Please remember that. It's very easy to remember. And uh, here we have the right hand with different dynamic than the left hand all uh, the time. And the right hand has the accompaniment. Uh, first, the, it just circled around 
and then goes up. So, together. <laughs> Part B. Part B continues the dialogue with the left hand, but we have the opposite, um, the, the order, the opposite order of the voices. First will appear the upper voice, and, and, and this has some meaning, right? Maybe suffering a little, and then the bottom voice, the bass. Scary. So it seems like there is a dialogue between some person that maybe doesn't want to die and the person in the bass that wants to kill this person. Well, that's quite heavy, but well, you know, something like this. So we, we have like begging and the answer. In the bass. And then the upper voice goes very high. And the lower voice. And this is the end of part B. Right hand has also the opposite accompaniment. For the first time in the etude, we have a scale going down. And now I have to stop to explain to you the difficulties of this. There is one thing to go with double thirds up, but there is a completely another thing to go down. This is like with uh, climbing, climbing the mountain, you know, when you climb the you know, Mount Everest or Himalaya mountain. If you know uh, the climbing, you know that it's something else that you go up and some, th there is a different technique when we go down. And the going down is even more difficult and more dangerous. So anyway, the same is with the etude. It's completely different technique. So suddenly we have to change the technique of playing. And we have the scale going down. And again. And then up. Down. And here Chopin is again very wicked because we have up, down, up, down. So we have to change this all the time. Up, down, up, down. And this is the end of part B. Let's listen to part B. the same, also we'll have the dialogue two times, but this time the second appearance of the dialogue will be more dramatic. Second time. And then we have part C. Part C is different. Uh, we only have the upper voice trying to be, play beautiful. And then only the, the, the bottom voice is only laughing a little. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. And then again. And again. Ha ha ha. This is a very well, funny, but I think scary dialogue. So listen again. And by the way, well, listen again first. Right hand uh, has a new problem. Again, double thirds, but this time broken double thirds. And I have to show you from the close up now. So one third up, one third down, one third up, one third down, 
one third up, one third down, one third up, one third down, but in a very fast tempo. It appears three times. For the first time it's very easy, very easy, because it is all on the, on the white keys, so... The second time, unfortunately, we have two more black, two black keys, so... Believe me, it's very uncomfortable. And the third time is the worst. We have chromatic, so white, black, white, black all the time. And the left hand is joining the right hand. So here is the moment, the climax of the etude, when the left hand has to also show that has the third technique. <laughs> This is the end of part C. Okay, so I think it's clear for now. Let's listen to the whole part C. Excuse me. to my beloved moment, my favorite moment of this attitude, part D. So let's go back a little and let's see what kind of structure we have. A, B, A, C, A, D. Can anybody tell me what kind of structure it is? What is the name? I'm watching with you and reading your comments, so Come on, I'm sure you know. If you watched my other videos from weeks, months ago, you should know. That's a rondo. That's a rondo. We had A, B, A, C, A, and now we have D. But let's continue. D is, as I said, my favorite moment when finally the left hand, uh, when the upper voice is, is playing such a warm melody and the down voice is answering. And again. And then suddenly we have this scale going down and that's the end of part D. Let's listen to part D alone. part D? Well, it looks like and it sounds like part A, but it's not really. It's just coda. And this coda is based on the material from part A. So let's listen to this coda. Chopin is one more time wicked. He just you know to to make matter worse, even worse, he asks the pianist, well he orders the pianist to play just chromatic scale with double thirds from the very top of the keyboard to the very bottom of the keyboard and it looks like this. <laughs> not very spectacular so you know the pianist worked hard six months of every day practicing breakdowns starting again breakdowns starting again finally goes on stage present it to the audience and then the audience is clapping like this <laughs> this is wicked 
sounds a little like Mozart music, you know. <laughs> oh, the same thing. Well, anyway, it's not that spectacular. But for those who know the difficulties, they can appreciate this attitude. But unfortunately, not all the audience can. So that's maybe a kind of minus of this attitude. Mm, but I personally don't think so. I, I love to play it, but certainly it is not the ending piece. It's not the, you know, you cannot end the, 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 the concert playing this attitude. So, we finished the whole analysis. We have the mini small rondo for the very first time in etudes. Um, and we have a beautiful poetry. We have a, a little dramatic dialogue in the left hand. And we have, I think, a very easy to follow structure of this etude. So I play for you again a little slower and I will tell where we are so that you will uh, remember exactly. Introduction. Part A. very much and now the surprise see you again in my next videos bye bye